Welcome back to the Himalayan webinar series. Today, I'm going to take you on a spiritual journey to one of five uh, adobes of Shiva in the Himalayas. Mani Mahesh Kailash, uh, deep inside the beautiful Chamba Valley, along three passes all the way from Angra, the foothills of the Himalayas, across the Dolador into Chamba, across two more high passes to reach to this uh, uh, spiritual place. As usual, uh, this session gets recorded on Zoom and uh, videos are posted on Insta TV, YouTube, my blog, ultrajourneys.org, and Facebook. Here you can see the beautiful uh, pilgrim paths. Uh, there's an annual Yatra here in the end of August where more than uh, several lakhs of visitors uh, visit this uh, place, Mani Mahesh. Uh, a beautiful lake is there. And the beauty about this part, I would say, is it's a well laid out part, it gets fixed every uh, year. So it's actually perfect for the, your first alpine style, um, not exploration, but alpine style hiking journey in the Himalayas along a well defined route and through some of the most, I mean, you can see it, some of the most beautiful, spectacular uh, paths I've encountered in my journey. So this session is dedicated to Sriram, who promised me to uh, go for this uh, first alpine style journey across this route. Okay, so we'll be starting off from Kangra, the plains, the foothills of the Himalayas, cross the Dolador through the Jalsu Pass, beautiful uh, tropical rainforest uh, starting from Putrala, get into the Chamba Valley, actually towards the end of the Chamba Valley, uh, and from there proceed. Uh, on the Sukdali Pass to get to the uh, spiritual Mani Mahesh Kailash and then again go around Kailash through the Dangodi Pass to end up in Kukhti which is uh, uh, the last village actually in Chamba uh, from the Barmar side. Here you can see uh, the path, I think well-defined path as we climb out of the uh, Chamba Valley to the high ranges uh, of uh, Mani Mahesh Kailash. Okay, let's take a look at the map. <clears throat> so here uh, we have a map of Chamba. Here you can see the Dolador, the high ranges of the Dolador here on the southern side. Uh, across that is the Jalsu Pass. Jalsu is the lowest pass actually, 3,400 meters. Um, there's uh, Dolador, I mean excluding the um, extreme uh, west of course. And then uh, once we get into the Chamba Valley, okay, defined by the Ravi River Valley, valley the Chamba Valley actually splits into two. One goes towards Bormor, and the other one goes to uh, Uli and, uh, and Barabangal eventually. So we climb over this uh, middle section uh, through the Sukdali Pass. And then uh, the Mani Mahesh Kailash is somewhere here, where we uh, cross over the Damgodi Pass to reach to the village of Kukti, the last village on uh, this tributary of the Ravi River or the Chamba Valley. Uh, bounded again by the Pir Panjal on the northern side, as you can see here. Voila, here are Google Earth pictures. Um, so again, you can see the Dolador here on the base. Uh, we start from Utrala, beautiful town at the base, not too far from Bir, scenic Bir also, uh, and Bajinat. So we start from Utrala, we climb through beautiful majestic forest, a lot of um, rainfall there, so beautiful green, uh, crystal clear streams coming down. We get over the Chalsu Pass and then we get in beautiful meadows to gradually descend to Lake Walimata, uh, one of the last uh, uh, motorable points here on uh, this side of the Chamba Valley. From there, we hitch a ride, a ride to the main town of Holi, where we uh, resupply food. And then uh, from Tiari, small village of Tiari, above the Ravi River Valley, we climb onto this high ranges here across the Sukdali Pass, coming into Mani Mahesh Lake at the base of Kailash here. And then we take a beautiful round around uh, Kailash using the Damgodi uh, to then finally end up at the village of Kukti and coming back to Hatsar from where we grab a bus back to Chamba. Here are the three passes we cross, right? The uh, Jalsu Pass, pretty low, 3,400 across the Dolador, and then uh, two bigger passes here, the Sukdali and the Damgodi at uh, 4, 6, and 4, 8, respectively. Uh, you can see solid climb, no matter the altitude, there are three, uh, two solid climbs involved, and then the Damgodi uh, is not too high above Mani Mahesh. Mani Mahesh is already quite high, so there you have, again, a solid descent to reach back to the uh, River, the main Chamba Valley. 
Here the same thing on a Google terrain map, uh, just for your reference. And here again, yeah, uh, given the fact that this is a pretty well-known Yatra pilgrim route, uh, you can see quite a few pilgrims along the way during that one week of um, identified pilgrim uh, win time window. Uh, many of these routes, shelter, trails, passes are clearly identified on open street maps, so you can just uh, easily find your way. Voila, as we start from uh, the foothills of the Himalayas, eh, from the Kangara side, we get into the mountains, we uh, gradually climb up. Initially, the trail is quite well defined and you have several of these uh, settlements along the way where you find uh, tea, food and uh, night stay as required on this side of the Jalsu Pass. Finally, you get into more uh, intense remote forest at the base of the pass. Very beautiful, you can see it's, it's quite um, a lot of rain here, so very moisty, a lot of uh, this green moss on the rocks and the trees. Beautiful path, quite a long traverse, so you should calculate for at least two days to cross this section. Here you can see the interior, uh, a lower dolador actually on the base of the Jalsu Pass, very pristine, lush green actually, very beautiful. Crystal clear streams coming down from the uh, high ranges, the dolador above. And as you can see, right, uh, anyone actually uh, can do this. I mean, a well-defined path, even these elder ladies, local ladies uh, who are in pretty good shape, uh, carry big bags along with them as they go over this 3,400 meter pass across the Dolador. Uh, here, a little bit misty as we again are already a little bit later in the afternoon. As you come down, then you go and gonna descend to beautiful meadows. Um, at various points, also, then you'll find rest the places, dabas, uh, so no need to worry about food or night stay, whatever you end up at the end of the night after crossing the Jalsu Pass, getting into a little bit more uh, barren landscape, right? As the Dolador blocks some of the initial monsoon rains hitting the Himalayas. As uh, I expected, you come across various pilgrims from all corners of uh, North India along your way. And then here you can see those beautiful meadows where you'll find horses, buffaloes, uh, sheep, uh, shepherd grazing these beautiful meadows uh, on above uh, this side valley, which eventually joins the main Chamba Valley. In the right uh, top corner, you can already see the high ranges around Mani Mahesh, Kailash. Voila, uh, at the destination, so we near Surai, which is the last, uh, set, I mean, the first real village or uh, the last settlement uh, at the Chamba site. You again come across uh, overwhelming hospitality, local people there welcome you into their home, give you food, give you night stay. Uh, so hospitality as its best as you get away from the plains, from the uh, modern economy. Here then, a final beautiful sunset view on the Chalsu Pass seen from Surai, uh, the first town you meet on the way to Chamba. Okay, then the next challenge is a, is a more intensive challenge, the Sukdali Pass at uh, 4,680 meters. Uh, again, that's why in going first of the Jalsu Pass is the right approach to already acclimatize, um, get in shape, um, uh, wake up that dead city body before you attempt this uh, steeper ascent. So here again at uh, the base village of Tiari, upper Tiari, actually you have two, uh, the upper and the lower Tiari. Again, it's overwhelming hospitality, people who give you a food massage, just imagine, uh, who clean your legs, who give you nice uh, festive meal here, mutton with chapatis, fresh apples plucked from the orchard outside. People are so amazing, it's, it's beyond words. So then as we climb up through this beautiful steep valley, high above uh, the Chamba Valley, above the main uh, village of uh, Ukhti, we come to the last settlement of Kla, Hasted on a steep slope. Very beautiful settlement. Uh, you have these beautiful homes here of Kla, uh, built with natural materials, those typical big uh, limestone tile roofs on top, and then complete wooden finish. Amazing to uh, stay in these places. Uh, I did this uh, trajectory twice, once in 2018, once in 2019. In 19, I was there during that week of pilgrimage. And then again, uh, you can see here a house, a volunteer, a host volunteer, you can say, in Kla village, who gives, offers his whole home uh, for pilgrims to uh, sleep overnight and even gives uh, free food, so I mean, beyond imagination. 
The beauty about this site, the um, uh, Subdali uh, route basically towards Mani Mahesh is that it's much less touristic, much less people you're gonna see here. And then on the main pilgrim site, which starts from the Parmar uh, site where you will find too much crowd, too much pollution. So this is very pristine, but also with uh, beautiful uh, food and shelter support along the way. Voila, here we walk up from clock in the morning when the whole uh, Chamba Valley and the high range is basically are indulged in beautiful mist while the morning sun uh, basically evaporates uh, the clouds in the valley. Uh, let's take a small walk with Leo through uh, the shepherds we meet along the way. Meeting a shepherd here on the way to Sukdali Pass. <laughs> He's grazing his uh, goats in high alpine meadows <laughs> for better milk and better uh, better meat. Okay, Papa is still asleep here with mommy. <coughs> to watch our step, small ones in the middle. Man, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> As you can see, a uh, heavily path here going sometimes on very steep rock faces, but given the fact that there is a well-maintained and well-used path, uh, traversing these amazing vertical slopes is like an, uh, a pretty kind of straightforward, straightforward walk, except in that you'll have to climb a lot, so it requires a good fitness level. Views are stunning below, you come across all these uh, three horses, sheep, buffaloes grazing in these fertile green meadows. Voila, further down, uh, we still have one more uh, little daba beyond the last village of Kla at the base of Sukdali. We'll have a temporary shelter where, again, there is like a public community kitchen giving free food to the pilgrims and even night stay if you end up there at the end of the day before you're going to cross uh, to the pass the next morning. Here then you can see that final vertical uh, steep rising hills towards the Sukdali Pass, typically indulged in clouds, waterfall, falls uh, flowing down from the heavens like an overwhelming sight basically. Here again you can see the first picture of the path leading up, actually a, a beautiful two meter wide path leading up that steep rock face which would have been impossible otherwise. Let's go for a walk um, up this slope. Shri <laughs> Shankar climbing up the Sukdali Pass out of the Chamba Valley. A good 3000 meter climb. With wonderful views on the valley below. The path is uh, quite rocky but pretty good as it's a pilgrim trail. Quite steep though. We had wonderful rotis with uh, chapatis and uh, nuts. So well powered to make the big climb. There is Leo, my co trigger for this week. The views are simply stunning. Okay, so here you can see the path hairpinning up, uh, hairpinning to less steep gradient than climbing up straight. And uh, along the way you meet these gentlemen, this was in 2008 when I went before the pilgrim season. You have these local guys who are actually, again, volunteers, who fix up the path as it always gets affected by melting rain and, uh, not melting rain, melting snow and ice. Uh, at the end of each winter, so they make sure the path is in good shape to take care of all the pilgrims on their routes. Very friendly guys, again, offering me a smoke on the hookah pipe, as well as some nice uh, homemade food and fresh tea. On the descent from Sukdali into the Chamba, valley below we can see steep cliffs all around us indulged in the morning clouds 
below us beautiful alpine flowers in all colors of the rainbow still have to descend quite a bit to the stream below waterfalls dropping down everywhere from the steep cliffs way downhill we met these four gentlemen who are preparing the trail for the annual Yatra to Mani Mahesh, the adobe of Lord Shiva which is on the other side of the Sugdali Pass high above there okay so then finally stunning views on the glacier hanging to the right side of the Sukdali Pass. Uh, this is a video from 2019 when I was coming from the other side. So let me take you on a short trail run down the same Sukdali Trail. Here we are on the way down from uh, Sukdali Pass above. Uh, join me for a small rocky trail run down the pass into the beautiful uh, Chamba Valley below. Let's go! You can You're see our ventilation on the right side. Stunning views all around. <laughs> Voila, that was a short trail run <laughs> in 2018 when coming from Mani Mahesh and descending to Shamba. So then finally from near the top you get these amazing views as usual from any pass, uh, even at the Pir Panjal, you see these stunning views on the cloud indulged uh, Chamba Valley uh, below. Voila, so as we then come a little bit closer over the Sukdali, we enter around, we see the Kailash appearing here and we basically are going to descend uh, a uh, just a little bit only to the Mani Mahesh uh, Lake where we will see a lot of pilgrim, uh, pilgrimers uh, coming from the shortcut here, Hatsar, uh, after Barmor, uh, which we will touch shortly and then basically continue further along a glacier here over the Damgodi Pass into beautiful stunning meadows uh, to reach and to go fully around Kailash and reach uh, the uh, Kukti village, magnificent fairy tale kind of village at the end of the Chamba Valley. Here you can see uh, Sivas Adobe, one of the five uh, Manimash Kailash, always encircled by clouds mostly. Let's take a uh, panoramic view with the phone. We are uh, standing on the Sukdali Pass on uh, 16th August 2018. We started uh, from Manimahesh down below there where thousands of people come to worship uh, Lord Shiva and in the months of September, October uh, represented uh, there in front of us by the Mani Mahesh Kailash we came uh, yesterday from uh, Kukti town behind the Kailash towards uh, Mani Mahesh 4800 meter pass giving stunning views on uh, large glaciers uh, all around. Same here at Sukdali at 4,600 meters, uh, surrounded by snow peaks and glaciers. We'll now be descending into the uh, Chamba Valley, uh, which is still uh, filled with clouds, a steep drop. 4,600 to around 2,600 meters. I can hear some uh, shepherds down below in the valley. Wow, 
amazing. So then crossing the Subdali, we finally come to the beautiful ice cold Mani Mahesh Lake, where the dedicated pilgrims will take a holy dip. Here you can see lots of lots of uh, uh, facilities there for food and stay. So many of the people from Hatsa, it's uh, one day up and down uh, from Hatsa, uh, accessible by bus and not bus. Buses go to Barmore. From Barmore, they take shared autos to the main town of Hatsar, where is the main pilgrim route comes up in a couple of hours or all the way to the same lake, but much less uh, beautiful than the way we came through Jalsu and Sukdali. Voila. So then after uh, hitting uh, Mani Mahesh here, we uh, simply avoid that main pilgrim route and we climb up towards the glacier and the moraines below the Damgodi Pass climb across it and then again descend over the glacier into a beautiful uh, meadows where we'll find a lot of shepherds and a lot of beauty as you will see. Okay, here we are uh, climbing over the glacier below Damgodi, I believe. We are uh, walking on the Damgodi glacier huge massive glaciers just below the Lamgodi Pass above the Mani Mahesh on the way to Pukti got some uh, very deep crevices here ice is pretty rough so easy to walk on covered with rubble and some rocks Dam Godi Pass is up there, 4,800 meters. Gateway from Mani Mahesh to Kukti village. And the Pir Panjal and Lahol. And uh, here uh, you can see the glaciers, massive. We'll be uh, taking a few shots from the top, revealing the actual uh, height. Big crevice behind me. <sighs> okay. Don't let yourself be intimidated here by the tiredness of this, of, on the face of this man, because this was task number 119 actually last year. <laughs> so energy was running low, I guess. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, so here then we can see the only tricky section, I would say, uh, just before Damgodi, where you actually climb up to uh, Loose Cree. Uh, this year again, heavy winter snowfall, so the soil is quite wet as the snow has recently melted. And with every step here, then you uh, sink in all the step down. But this is a rather small traverse to the final section of the Damgodi Pass, where again, many pilgrims uh, go to the other side to end up in beautiful um, meadows. Let's climb up the final section. Climbing up uh, pretty steeply here, last 200 meters to the Damgodi Pass, <sighs> through rubble and landslides. <sighs> Stunning views on the Damgodi Pass there, vast glacier, sorry, vast glacier, covered with snow <sighs> till the horizon. No pot, I think it gets destroyed every year by the snow and the rain. <laughs> Rough landscape, the pass is up there, you can see the flag on top. <sighs> Another uh, 100 meter I think, and uh, look who I meet in uh, at the base of Damgodi, it's Mr. Leo. Unbelievable, what a coincidence ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good trek. <laughs> quite steep. <laughs> yeah. Last couple of passes were quite amazing. I think it's my last one, so yeah. the harder the better. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Ride. Check, check. See you guys on top. Okay, so then here from the top of the Damgodi Pass, amazing views on this vast glacier at the base of uh, Kailash, uh, extending almost to the horizon and of course uh, supplying main 
uh, glacial meltwater supply to the Chamba Valley, which will then uh, flow towards the Kukti side, Barmore side, and finally join the main Ravi River Valley down midway in Chamba. Okay, here another pictures of 2018, where uh, one doggy uh, joined me on my traverse from Kukti to the Damgori Pass as we uh, crossed the moraines below the pass. We just crossed the uh, Damgori Pass at uh, 4,850 meters and getting stunning views on the Mani Mahesh glacier. Huge glacier as far as the horizon stretches. Stunning like a different planet, frozen planet. Down below there, another two, three kilometers we should reach uh, Mani Mahesh. Voila, so then finally we hit the third pass of this traverse, the Dam Godi Pass at 4,860 meters, the highest of the three. From where uh, we descend, uh, here you can see the descent onto another glacier. Here it's pretty simple, uh, still covered by snow, so you can just almost run or slide down uh, into the valley below. Then very soon again you come on to uh, proper support, uh, pilgrim support, big tents there uh, for night stay at this side of the pass with uh, any food you, you can imagine. These are of course commercial, we have to pay, but all very reasonable. As uh, so in this, things are operated by the local people from the local villages to support the pilgrims. Uh, here you can see some of the uh, rocks painted along the way of this Yatra route at the base of Damgodi, where you enter the meadows. Here's uh, a big doggy, shepherd doggy, who gave me company all the way from Kukti to, Dam to Mani Mahesh, actually, <laughs> during 2018. Huge uh, big dog, which is typically used by the shepherds to protect the uh, sheep from nocturnal predators roaming around. Then um, in 2019, we settled down here with some friendly shepherds at the turning of the valley that uh, eventually leads to Kukti uh, village below there. Uh, lots of sheep and a couple of friendly shepherds who insisted uh, uh, on us joining them for dinner in this beautiful open shelter. Uh, Finally, you come through most of the stunning, most stunning, beautiful meadows on your way to Kukti as you climb up from the valley uh, below a slight climb before we eventually hit Kukti. You can see heavenly landscape here, it's extremely beautiful, deep inside uh, of the Chamba Valley, surrounded by the high ranges of the Pir Panjal on the north and uh, Mani Mahesh Kailash on the south. Finally, we uh, cross uh, a bridge here, coming from the actually the Kukti Pass uh, across the Pir Panjal to finally hit the picturesque village of Kukti, the last village in the Chamba Valley. I mean, the Parmar side that is, and you can see the entire village here is built with natural uh, materials, wood, limestone, tile roofs, and rocks. So amazing place to also stay. A lot of dabas, a lot of places here to find food on your way out uh, towards Barmur. Very traditional village, right? Far away. This is almost, if you would walk from the main town of Chamba in Chamba Valley, this would be at least a five-day walk to reach to this place. Okay, and then from uh, Kukti, back you have a jeep trek towards Barmur, where you will find, uh, as you can see, a lot of sheep also on their way out from the meadows at the end of the summer back home to the foothills of the Himalayas. Voila, and that was the Mani Mahesh Traverse, a real recommended hike, well marked, so no need for much map, uh, map skills, map reading or navigation skills. The pilgrim route is well defined. So perfect thing actually to challenge your fitness level to do some alpine style hiking in the Himalayas. See you guys tomorrow for another beautiful unknown traverse in some of the lower passes uh, in the beautiful Luck and Bar Barod Valleys in Kulu district.